This woman produced my show, Kath on a Hot Tin Roof, a couple of years ago. She's incredibly gifted, incredibly clever. I'm so thrilled that she said, yes, yeah, she'd be a story to Dollar today. Please welcome to the stage, Rebecca Dumanuma. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to uh, dedicate this story to all the storytellers who've gone before me and mentioned everything I'm about to mention. <laughs> so this goes out to you. <laughs> I'd like, ladies and gentlemen, for you to just close your eyes for a moment and take yourselves back. Back to 1987. Pseudo Echo were spending a lot of time in funky town. Kylie Minogue, the singing budgie, had launched her music career with the release of the song Locomotion. The Bangles were walking like an Egyptian. And I was about to enter high school. Now, no matter how many times people tell you that high school is going to be the most exciting time in your life, when you're coming out of the cocoon and the warmth and the safety blanket of primary school where everything's done for you and launched into a seething pit of testosterone, hormones and, 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 and food fights, there's only a few things that you can actually hang on to to keep yourself sane in those moments. Luckily for me, I had a vivid imagination, so I would imagine scenarios where I conquered everything, where everything was fine. If somebody approached me and didn't like me, it was okay. I'd make a joke, they'd laugh, and we'd be lifelong friends. <laughs> and also, I played a lot of sport, so I was familiar with a lot of the people that were going to be at my school that weren't necessarily in my class in primary school. I knew a lot of different people. Let's put it this way. I played A-grade netball, I excelled at school, uh, I had a very happy, happy, happy family life with two parents that loved me and a brother who also, funnily enough, loved me. And yet, the interesting thing is, I guess you could say I was, for the purposes of the rest of this story, let's just call me overachiever. Okay? Great. Good. Got that out of the way. Now I'd like you to imagine the Hills District in 1987. Back then, it was not the pristine green suburbia, the happy, clappy Bible belt that it now is. The Hills District back then was the western suburbs, where you feared getting your head flushed down the toilet at school, and it actually happened. Where you had your house with your family, those children would be raised, they would get married, either marry somebody in the year above or below you at school, get pregnant, move into a house around the corner from either set of parents. That was where I grew up. Now I'd like you to think of my high school. Rough as guts high. Where the girls wore nearly skirts. Where the guys were men. and <laughs> I'd never seen a man in a school uniform before. And where the teachers were there to see out some of their teaching time before they could get a promotion to a school that was a little bit better. That's where I went to school. So off I go, overachiever, enters into the field of high school. There's a lot of people to see that I am scared by. There's a lot of people to see that I'm familiar with. And I wave and I say hello. And of course, overachiever gets put into the top end class of year seven. So branded overachiever for the rest of high school. And I get asked to go with my class off to the industrial arts class. And as I'm sitting there and I'm feeling slightly insecure, only knowing two people in my class and nobody else, we weren't really friends in primary school, so that made it difficult. I remember sitting on those high stools that they had in industrial arts, the ones with no stoppers on the end, so when you move them, everyone in unison made a chorus of... <coughs> and I pulled out my stool and I sat down and there was one guy, I heard a crash, boom, bang, and onto the ground fell this guy. It made the entire class laugh, myself included, and then I took a other look at him and I noticed that he was really hot, like really cute. And as he picked himself up off the ground, thoroughly embarrassed, everybody pointing and laughing at him, I decided there and then that I would fixate. Let's now, for the purposes of this story, call him, uh, he's a cutie, okay? He's a cutie. So, for three years, my crush on He's a Cutie develops. Of course, I say nothing. Now, whilst I may be considered to be an overachiever in other aspects of life, I was also uh, what you might call an early developer. For ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Fellas, tits and ass. So, basically, I was a girl trapped in a woman's body in a situation where I was feeling very insecure with a crush on a guy who looked like a boy in a class of Year 7. It was a really conflicting thing to do. So 
there's two sides of me, the overachiever and the massively, massively, massively insecure girl. Let's, for the purposes of the story, forget overachiever. Let's just call me overdeveloped. <laughs> so anyway, the years go by. And let's now flash forward to 1990. MC Hammer is telling you that you can't touch this. Sinead O'Connor is telling us all that nothing compares to you. Rick Lacasas is saying, boom, boom, let's go back to my room. And it's all happening. Of course, with this, year 10 arrives. And with year 10 comes the year 10 formal. Now, the interesting thing about the guys at my school is that at that stage, they either wore bad Billy's clothes, billabong clothes, or were smoking bongs. The girls in my year were wearing things that were being passed off as skirts, but I'd call a handkerchief, all wearing exactly the same hairstyles. On a student free day, they would want to go to Sports Girl and buy the same top but in a different colour so that they could all be the same. Isn't that exciting? Whereas I just wanted to go to the ABC shop and look at books and get videos of comedy shows. So let's just say I was overly developed and out of place. But I did get along with everybody at school. I was everybody's friend. Everybody's friend. Could always make a joke, always make people laugh, always be pleasant, always strike up a conversation. But what happens in year 10, I'd like to explain it to those of you who never experienced the year and tried to find a formal partner. But you can tell from the first day of school in year 10 that there's a bit of a buzz happening. People are starting to check people out. People are starting to imagine them on their arm wearing something flash. What kind of corsage that person might actually buy them. Are we the same height or am I way too tall to go out with that guy? Is he way too tall for me? How embarrassing. What if he tries to bend down and kiss me and we clash? All those things start to come into play. Whereas I'm thinking, I've got netball training this afternoon. <laughs> so anyway, I decide that if there was anybody that I would like to spend a night with, in the innocent sense, at the Year 10 formal, that it would be, what a cutie. Now, I'm not one for, let's say, jumping the gun. I'm one who likes to pace myself. I'm one who likes to just take my time, size up a situation, know where I best fit in and then just head right there. It's worked for me in the past. But in my group of friends who were all wearing the same coloured shirts, the same shirts in different colours, all wearing the same hairstyles, they all just happened to be thoroughly attractive women. One in particular caught every guy's attention and they would always ask me to introduce her to them. Let's, for the purposes of this story, call her, she's a hottie. Okay. And then the guys in my year, uh, some really attractive guys, some guys I never really spoke to, guys that were gross, guys that teased me, guys that laughed with me, guys I sat next to in class, but none of them ever asked me out. So for the purposes of the rest of this story, let's call them disinterested parties. So the year progresses, and I remember the very first day when somebody actually announced that Melanie had asked so-and-so to the formal, and it spread like wildfire. And it was almost like a disease. It caught on straight away. Well, if she's asked somebody, then that means that I might miss out on somebody, and there's only how many men are in the year? How many guys are in the year? Well, there's what? There's 52 guys and there's 58 girls. Oh, my goodness. 52 guys and 58 girls. That means six girls are going to have to miss out, and they're going to have to go on their own. You know what that means? Disaster. Social disaster. I'm not just talking about the night. I'm talking about the rest of high school, maybe for the rest of your life. You'll end up with nobody. But I had to go to netball training. <laughs> the school formal is an amazing thing. There are people that get on the committee to organise it. Guess who was on that? There are people that get asked to MC it. Guess who that was? There are people who get asked if the limo can go to your house so that your parents can actually greet the limo, pay for it, and then we'll all pay you back and we'll have 50 people in your lounge room and you'll be on your own. That was me. <laughs> but I still had my vision I still had my long-term goal in sight. There was light at the end of the tunnel. And guess who was holding that light? What a hottie. And he was beckoning me towards the light. Because he smiled at me in class today. That means he likes me. He told me I was an idiot. That means he really likes me. He pushed me over when we were walking home across the oval. Oh, my God, it's on. But still I took my time. And I paced myself. I don't think I ever really told my friends the extent of the crush that I had on Water Hottie. I kept it kind of to myself. Every now and then I'd mention it, but you know what? You know. You know when someone walks into a room and your friend melts onto the floor that they kind of like somebody. 
I thought the hints were obvious. I thought what a hottie might just pick up on that. I thought she might just figure out, oh, there's something going on there. I might just back off. On the naivety of youth. Okay, so what have we got? We've got what a cutie, we've got what a hottie, we've got disinterested party, we've got overachiever, and we've also got, let's see, all the other girls called the pretty posse. Let's imagine, ladies and gentlemen, the race is about to jump. There we go. We've got, uh, yes, that's right, we've got a uh, overachiever there. She's uh, been in great form all year. Uh, quiet, Philly. She just uh, keeps everything to herself. She doesn't really like to uh, tell anybody how she's feeling. Just a little bit of shush. She goes home and cries at night while she listens to Nick Cave and Morrissey. But that's okay. She's, uh, she's, uh, I think she might do well. I think she might do well. Of course, they're all playing here, ladies and gentlemen, for the big prize. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And it's uh, what a cutie, what a cutie, what a cutie. But, ladies and gentlemen, as they all line up at the gate, it's what a hottie. She's standing there. She's wearing a short skirt. She's got big boobs and a plunging neckline. Okay, we've got all the other girls. We've got the disinterested parties. They're just riding themselves. They don't care. They just ride themselves all afternoon and they're off and racing and along goes along goes overachiever she's racing towards what a cutie she's racing towards what a cutie but it's okay because what a hottie's coming from behind oh look out here comes somebody no one's expecting it's confirmed bachelor it's confirmed bachelor making his way towards what a cutie oh all you can do overachiever is to get into line of <laughs> confirmed bachelor receive a letter from him as he asks you to the formal and you suggest maybe he should ask someone else and they're going straight towards the line they're going straight towards the line it looks like the just, just the parties have just opted out they're now just going with the girl that they first touched the boob of. And now it seems as though all the pretty posse, they've all got their partners. There's only three people remaining. There's only three. It's what a cutie. It's what a hottie. And it's overachiever. And it's what a hottie that sweeps what a cutie off and takes her to overachiever's house and waits for the limo to arrive as 50 people stand there and she just smiles and welcomes what a cutie into the house. And I've got to tell you, he looked really cute that day. He was wearing a black tux with red and red cummerbund. <sighs> Just pipped at the post. But I went to the formal and I emceed what some like to say in the biz, the shit out of it. <laughs> and now as I put this story out to pasture, what have I learnt from it? Well, I've learnt that my inability to express how I felt to what a hottie caused me to end up on my own at the formal. It also taught me that I was going to experience that on my own experience. Again, at the Year 12 formal. But guess what? I emceed the shit out of that one too. <laughs> and it also taught me that no matter what, as a 37-year-old single woman still looking for what a cutie, that I can actually say that one thing that that taught me and one thing I'm most proud of is that I can still walk into any function any party, any celebration on my own, and I'm completely content. Thank you. Thank you, Jim and Emma.